How's it going everybody? It's VD Engineering here. So this video will apply to those who are majoring in mechanical or aerospace engineering because it is dealing with fluid mechanics. So I know that some of you guys will have a course where you have to do computational fluid dynamics or CFD and one of the most popular software for that is ANSYS. So in this video I'll be talking about how you can improve a mesh in ANSYS by using a structured grid. A structured grid is basically like even shapes for the mesh because your mesh defines your flow domain so you want the mesh to be highly accurate as possible. So in this video I'll be looking at two examples. The second example will be covered in part two and the first example will be done now. We'll be looking at a nose cone and how you can efficiently mesh that to obtain a better solution for your fluid dynamic simulation. So let's get started. I will show you guys a quick method to import a 2D sketch in SOLIDWORKS into ANSYS. So we have our two-dimensional sketch there. This is for example two of the next video, but it's the same concept. The first thing you want to do is go into Tools, or sorry, Insert, Surface, and Planar. And once you're in Planar, you can select your bounding entities, which are your two, which are your sketch there. So select that and then hit the check mark sign. And once you hit the check mark sign, it has created a two-dimensional plane, which you can then import into ANSYS by simply going into fluid flow fluid and then right click geometry make it to first make it two dimensional verify that is very important and then right click that and then import geometry and then click for your part so i look for my part there and it should be called wedge or so yeah in the nose cone for example because the nose cone is in part one and the same thing for part two which is the wedge geometry so that's how you quickly import a two dimensional sketch from solidworks into ANSYS. So to open your first example, which is my nose cone here, you simply double click on geometry and then select generate to create your sketch in the flow. And once you have it there, it should take a minute and you will see a two dimensional sketch in your XY plane because I defined my XY plane in SOLIDWORKS as the sketch plane. So it should, it should match in ANSYS. So I'm in mesh right now and to hit mesh, select a right click and generate mesh. So it should create your mesh. Now the default mesh is very unstructured because that is how ANSYS does it. It is also quite inaccurate. As you can see, there are very large elements there. You have a triangle. You have like a very skewed elements, especially towards the boundary. So we can, we need to refine it quite a lot. We will be adding a face split because we need to first split the surface up into four pieces, which makes it very easier to add a structured mesh because if you face mesh the entire thing, it's not going to read the domain so well. I will explain this more as I go along, but the general idea is to first create a separate four separate domains which are connected which will help you perform the face meshing operation in a much more effective manner so let's see how that works so to add lines to my sketch to to split the domain i will have to go into my xy plane and then hit new sketch by clicking the button there so once i do that then i can create my lines very quickly so i've created four lines to split my domain into four sections now you can see that there's a constraint option there, C. So that means that it is flush with the uh, the axis. So we want these lines to be straight because for this geometry, we are creating a straight mesh along the, the forebody of the nose cone. So you will see what I mean once I create the mesh, it'll be much, much more comprehensible there. So once I create those lines, I can simply hit go into concept lines from sketches, as you can see there. And then I will select my four lines very quickly. You can hit control to select it. So hit apply where it says base object, base objects, excuse me. And then you can just hit generate. So that creates your four lines. To create a projection or to split the face, go on tools, face split. And then my target face is obviously my domain. So it'll be the whole section there. Hit apply and then for my tool geometry select one line at a time don't select all all four at the same time because it will create one split so you can hit generate and then do it for all of them so make sure you hit only one line you select only one of the lines at one time which will create four sections and when you're done it should look something like this you have a section there you have a section there and then you have four sections now so and once you're done, you can simply suppress your line bodies because that should not show up in your mess. So you can right click suppress for all of them. Let's generate the mesh and see what it looks like at the moment. So let's see what happens. It should take a minute. 
and you have a it looks slightly better it looks more structured for sure because now we can adjust our sizing make it fine relevant center use advanced size function to on and then simply select high smoothing and then reduce your maximum sizing there so you can see how it's 168 millimeters which is quite insane so we can make it smaller to about half that so about 80 millimeters and then once you can re then we can recreate the mesh and see what it looks like so simply hit right click and generate and then give it a second there to load it should take a little bit longer because we are making our element smaller so it should take a while to, to load up there so just sit back so you can see our mesh now is much more dense but we can still we still need to add our face meshing because we need to make it flat so go on mesh and then face meshing there mesh control method face meshing and then simply do it several times and then select all your faces there and then click regenerate so it should create a more dense mesh in your domain so let's take a look and if you see it'll generate much faster because the geometry elements are less skewed so you see how it looks very nice now it, it looks very smooth but it is still inaccurate because especially near your boundary there the domain elements are quite big so we need to make them smaller to refine it once i added a bunch of sizing my new mesh looks like this so let me show you guys how i created this very nice mesh to do that you will have to do four things you will have to first apply the face meshing and then go on edge sizing so i will show you how, how to do that quickly you can see how it's very dense near near the boundary now we have some inflation layers there so you will have to go on mesh control and sizing and then it should give you an option of edge sizing there for geometry select my first line as on top as you can see and then select number of divisions and then 100 it can be anything you want and then now you can if you see how the 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 elements are very dense towards the base and then very light towards the top because i have a bias as you can see there so we need to select the bias factor and you can see how it's very dense towards the top so my bias factor is that much at the moment but you, the more you make it the more it's going to be it's going to be uh it's going to be a lot, lot more dense at the bottom and more dense at the top the more you make it so the more the the higher your bias factor is right so i did that for all four of my sketch elements and then the exact same thing because they're on both sides so they are symmetric and then same with the uh i added some elements on the nose cone itself so i put some density into that and for the back also i put uh, i put more elements here and then i put a bias factor of four which can which makes it very dense near the proximity of the nose cone so that's it for this tutorial um once i i apply those sizing elements i can then see how it looks like by simply going on mesh control and sizing so keep that in mind and that's it for this video that's my mesh and then in my next video i'll be talking about how you can generate a much better mesh for a different geometry which will be a wedge so i'll see you guys in the next video thank you for watching i hope you learned a lot take care goodbye